Hey everybody, Pumpkin here. Today I'm going to go over the recent changes that are about to take place in Gwent. These changes will be coming later this week, probably within the next two to three days. Um, CDPR did a dev stream talking about upcoming uh, mulligan slash leader changes and a few balances. Uh, we'll start, we'll, we'll do the leaders at the end. So very simply in terms of nerfs, um, Seahill, Thankfully, it got nerfed. Uh, the card went from 14 provisions down to 11 provisions, um, but it has two cooldowns. So when you use its ability, you then have to wait a turn, and then you can use it again. Uh, this is going to severely hinder the card, uh, probably make it unplayable. Um, honestly, I'm hoping they do some kind of rework in the future so that this card does see some play. Um, but for the time being, uh, you probably will not see any more play, and I'm okay with that. Uh, Letho, uh, because mulligans are changing, uh, it means Letho is going to get changed as well. Letho right now uh, removed all of your opponent's mulligans. Uh, it's going to, when the patch hits, it's going to be a 9 for 11, which is the same as uh, Primordial Dao. So it's a terrible card, um, but it does have an ability. CDPR just hasn't told us what it is yet. Um, so I guess you could look forward to some interesting ability on Letho. So that's kind of cool. Um... The one other card that's getting changed is Botchling. So a couple patches ago, CDPR said that Botchling Lubricant was bugged in that uh, when you flipped it over, it would reset its uh, strength. So it's at five strength. Your opponent plays Malayan, pings it down to one. If you flip it, uh, old Letho, or sorry, old Botchling Lubricant would flip over and reset itself back to five. They said this was a bug, so they changed it so that it wouldn't reset value, but then they have come back and decided, eh, we like it. So yeah, now it's going to reset again. So a little bit of a buffer NR. So eh, that should bring play, uh, play rates up a tiny bit. Um, okay, so that's all the changes in terms of cards. There's a few other bugs that they're fixing. Um, yeah. Um, Mulligans. Mulligans are changing. So right now, mulligans are tied to leaders. Depending on the leader that you choose will determine how many mulligans you get for the game. That's getting thrown out. Um, every single deck, every single faction, every single archetype, all going to have the same amount of mulligans. Uh, by default, every deck has two, two, and two, which means you get two mulligans in round one, two mulligans in round two, two mulligans in round three. If you lose coin flip, you get an extra mulligan in round one, just like it is right now. Um, these do not carry over, so there's no bank. You don't get four mulligans that you get to use throughout the course of the game. It's you get two, two, and two, or three, two, two. So if you choose not to use the mulligan, that's fine. Um, but the next round, you're going to have two. You're not going to have four. They're not going to add on. Um, also, this is weird. So right now in Gwent, uh, let's say you pass in round one with eight or nine cards in hand, you would end up discarding one or two cards in the next round. Uh, in the upcoming patch, they're going to make it so that any card that you have excess, so any uh, any amount more than seven if you go into the next round, uh, you won't discard it, you just won't draw it, and that will turn into a mulligan. So if you wanted to, you could dry pass in round one with ten cards in hand, uh, you would draw zero cards. Well, you would overdraw three cards. You wouldn't actually overdraw in the new system. Uh, and those overdraws would be translated into mulligans. So in round two, you would have five mulligans uh, instead of the two. So the idea of this is it's giving you the ability to dry pass. Uh, as people have said, oh, this is bringing dry pass back. It's not. Dry passing was there to get card advantage. Um, and to punish people uh, and stuff like carryover. You get an extra mulligan. So this will see play where in round two, sometimes you'll have eight cards and you just throw away some garbage card and then you pass. Uh, now, if you have eight cards, you'll just pass. You won't take that extra mulligan or you won't um, play that card. Unless, of course, they're all... Unless it's... Eh, no, yeah, no. You just don't. You just hold the card uh, and you get that extra mulligan. So that's really the only scenario. I don't think you're going to be passing round one uh, fewer than seven cards in hand. You can, but giving control to your opponent 
with more than seven cards in a long round two is not something you usually want to do. So I would not advise it. But uh, it is nice for uh, from round two to three. You get that one extra mulligan if you need it. So it's a small change. Uh, it'll help you a little bit, I guess. Um, may maybe it's a bigger deal than I think. Well, we'll have to wait and see. So the meat of everything. Um, because mulligans are no longer attached to leaders, leaders now cost provisions. Well, they don't cost provisions. So originally when they announced it, I thought each leader costed provisions. So at, if you look on the screen in front of you, uh, I have all the leaders and they have a big number next to them. Those are not the amount of mulligans. Uh, that is how many provisions it gives to your deck. So top left-hand corner, Ethne, this gives you 19 provisions uh, to understand this. When you go into deck builder, your deck is going to start with 150 provisions. So right now, uh, in current Gwent, we have 165. So if you go into new Gwent in a couple days, uh, you're going to start out with 150, and then you're going to choose your leader. Let's say you choose Ethne, you're going to get your 150 plus 19. Uh, so you're going to be sitting on about well, you're going to be sitting on 169 provisions, which is four more than you currently have. So a leader like Ethne is getting buffed. Um, so this is CDPR's way of uh, balancing leaders, which, I mean, we'll have to wait and see how it works out. Um, I like the idea of mulligans on leaders. The problem was it was too hard to balance, as we saw. So hopefully this will be a little easier. Uh, so the range is 19 to 10, or 10 to 19. Uh, the low end being Usurper giving your deck plus 10, which is 5 less than we currently have. Um... Yeah, let's go through the leaders one by one. So starting top left, Ethne. 19. Uh, Ethne is not seeing a lot of play right now. Four extra provisions in a deck will definitely help. There's no doubt about that. Um, it might be good enough. Uh, when you're playing Ethne, you want to play cards like Regis and Scorch, and those cards got nerfed a couple times. Uh, so the extra four provisions will help. Um, I don't know if it's good enough but it might be. We'll see. It's definitely a buff. I, I look forward to playing some Ethne next patch. So th this might be enough to push it into uh, viability. We'll see. Morvin, 18. Um, reveal is not in a great spot. I don't think this will help. I, I mean, it'll help, but not to the extent where the deck will be tier 1 or tier 2. Kraken Crate, 17. This is a buff, obviously. It's two more than it currently has. I guess they're wanting people to play Kraken Crate more, which I'm okay with because the Herald player rates are very, very high right now. So anything to incentivize not Herald, uh, I'm okay with. Um, in general, uh, SK is getting a, a slight buff simply because... Well, technically every faction is getting a buff because every faction now has more mulligans, right? So every faction has six mulligans instead of the cap of three. So any deck where you brick on cards is going to brick less often. Uh, and SK does this from time to time because of cards like Morkvarg and Skirmishers because you have to discard them, you have to draw them in your hand. Sometimes you try to get rid of them in round one and round two and you get stuck with them in round three and you end up losing the game because you just have bricks and that's not fun. So SK overall I, is actually going to um, do well with this upcoming patch, which is a little scary because SK is doing really well right now. So... A little worried, but uh, we'll see. So Kraken Crate, I'm okay with at 17. Hensolt, honestly, I wouldn't have mind Hensolt being at like 18. No one's plays Hensolt. Yeah, I mean, it's a buff, but who cares? Uh, I'd like to see Hensolt at 18, personally. Woodland Spirit, 16. Uh, this is one higher than it currently is. Big monsters, and yeah, they're in a really good. Uh, yeah, they're in a pretty good spot right now. I wouldn't say Woodland Spirit and Ada are on the same level. <laughs> um, yeah, I would put Ada up another one. Or, uh, so the problem is a lot of these I disagree with by like one or two points. Um, maybe CDPR has numbers behind these leaders, uh, and. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about. Maybe Ada's actually really, really good, and Woodland is on par with Ada. I mean, yeah, you have Hubert. I played some Hubert Ada today. It's kind of fun. Um, not very consistent, but it's fun. Uh, yeah, Woodland, big Woodland's still going to be good. Ada, this isn't enough to push the deck. Damavend, 
We're in a pretty heavy control meta right now. I don't think Devo, this is enough to push Demovin. Aridin, Aridin, Calvi, all of these 15s are where they are right now. Um, the only difference would be Unseen Elder. So Unseen Elder is getting more mulligans. Unseen Elder right now is at two mulligans. This is getting bumped to six. One of the issues with Unseen Elder is sometimes you don't draw your Death Wish. Um, you'll get into round two or round three and you got no death wish and your leader sucks. Um, that's a problem. So this should help Unseen Elder. Um, maybe not tier one, but I, I think I think Unseen Elder will be tier two next patch. I would be surprised if he wasn't. Uh, you can also apply this to Calvit. So Calvit also has two mulligans. Uh, so going from two to six is huge. Yeah, I, I think Calvit will be good too. Basically, any leader that went from two to six mulligans uh, is getting a significant buff. Um, because a lot of those leaders that were at two uh, were being hindered by the lack of mulligans. Uh, this also applies to Francesca. One of the issues with Francesca is you do need to find those specials. And I've had many games where I just don't find those specials. My garrison will be at the bottom. Um, or my last raid or my blue dream. Wh whatever spell I need I just don't have it. So the extra mulligans are definitely going to help. Uh, M here, Bran. I don't know why Bran is so low. I really don't. 13 provisions for Bran means that, in theory, King Bran is better than Harold. That's just not true. Um, yes, thinning is a very valuable resource. I cannot deny that. But SK already thins zero. So in a game of Gwent, you start with 10 cards and you draw six more over round two and round three. So you're seeing 16 of your 25 cards. So you get nine cards left. So you have to thin those nine cards. Uh, Witchers, the trio, pulls two. Burner pulls two more. Two Scalds, uh, we're looking at six. And then the last card, uh, what is it, Duran, is three. So there's your nine cards. Um, SK can pretty consistently thin to zero. Uh, and with the... in Increased mulligans coming in the upcoming patch. Uh, it's only going to get better. Because every now and then you'll have that burn out Duran at the bottom of the deck. Because you just don't draw them. Uh, and you get kind of screwed over. But the ex the increased mulligans should definitely help with this. So SK already thins to zero. You basically never play King Brand. There's really no reason to. I, I honestly think King Brand should be higher up. Like I don't, I'd almost like to say like 15 or 16. Uh, this could be problematic if a discard SK deck uh, becomes viable, a deck that, I don't know, plays Coral. Um, but that deck doesn't exist right now. So, yeah, I'm a little confused with King Bran. I, I don't know why he's so low. I, I don't know why you would ever play King Bran over Harold. I, I think Harold should be like 12 and King Bran should be 15 or 16. So, a little unsure what they're thinking there, but eh, maybe they have some numbers that I don't have. Uh, Francesca makes sense. Full test makes sense. Arrakis Queen. <sighs> so the problem with consume, I mean, the biggest issue is there's not enough support. Um, extra mulligans are definitely going to help. I don't think it's enough. Um, usually your, your best case scenario for round one with Arrakis Queen is like Karanthir plus Ruhin, so you can Karan here the Ruhin and save the, the second Ruhin for later on in round two or round three. So this will help with that a little bit. Uh, do remember, you still only get two mulligans in round one, um, and current Arrakis Queen has that. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, I don't think it'll help enough, and the fact that it's losing provisions is not very helpful because a lot of the monster cards are on the more expensive side. So... Yeah, Arrakis Queen's going to go from not seeing much play to probably not seeing much play. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of hope that Arrakis Queen would have gotten more uh, provisions, if anything. Maybe like 16, not 12. So a little disappointed with that. Um, I'll have to wait and see. Usurper, Usurper, bottom of the barrel. I'm okay with this. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about this card. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people, yeah. Love-hate relationship with this card. Uh, every now and then I queue with this deck if I'm facing a lot of Herald, just because if you don't have last say against a Herald deck, it can be rough. Uh, Usurper kind of mi mitigates the Herald, which is kind of nice. Um, so every now and then I queue in some Usurper. Uh, I like the leader just because it, it is kind of a uh, meta breaker. 
Um, losing five provisions on Usurper. Honestly, sounds bad, but you have to remember with Usurper, you're just playing value cards because you're trying to deny your opponent's deck, right? So let's say they play a Mortart deck with Aridin. You just completely deny it. Um, let's say they're playing a Bruver deck. Usurper's really good against Bruver because Bruver... 90% of the time is used to line up uh, Shiru. And if you no longer can do that, you're playing a two-point Shiru, which is <laughs> really bad. Uh, the way Skoyatel gets points is Shiru. Uh, and if you completely deny that, well, they don't get any points. So th there are some decks where Usurper just hard counters. Um, so I still think Usurper will see play. Also, Mulligans. Um, lots of Mulligans. You go from one to six. That's a huge change. Um, I think Usurper will still be playable. Um, I, I would have liked to see him at 11, but 10 is fine. Um, it's a nice nice number, I guess. So I'll still play some Usurper every now and then. I'm most excited to play some Ethne. Uh, so Ethne compared to Brewer, those are really the only two playable Scoia leaders right now. Uh, and I say this because... It is my belief that the best Skoyatel card right now is Shiru. That is the best way to get points. And Francesca and Philavandrel, you can't play Shiru in those decks. You just can't because you can't line cards up. You have to play Bruver, you have to play Ethne. Bruver's a little better than Ethne because you can play Shiru naked and then boost it up with Bruver. Uh, and you can line your opponent's cards up with cards like Archers or Merlane. Whereas Ethne, you have to boost... Shiru another way, either uh, Call of the Forest or Ithlin, which makes it a little bit more complicated, but not to the extent where it makes it unplayable. So I would still put Bruver better than Ethne um, right now, currently, but with four extra provision, maybe. We'll have to see. I think it really depends on the meta. Um, if there are lots of fours and sixes, uh, Bruver is generally better. The cases where Ethne is better is when there's a lot of Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard has a lot of fives. Um, example of this would be Slave Infantry and the Witchers, uh, Sarah and Ox. Uh, and there's a bunch of other fives. But basically, fives are really difficult for uh, Skoyatel to line up with uh, Shiru, unless, of course, you're playing Call of the Forest. So um, in that scenario where Nilfgaard is good, then Ethne is better than Bruver. Uh, and with the Calvit change, well, not the Calvit change, but with the Mulligan increase for Calvit, Nilfgaard might be more popular. So there, there's a decent chance Ethne sees more play. Well, she'll definitely see more play, but will she be better than Brewer? We'll have to see. So for the most part, I'm pretty happy with these changes. Uh, I like having more Mulligans for the most part. Uh, I'm excited to see a little bit more play out of some of these leaders, such as Ethne, Calvite, maybe Bran. I highly doubt it. I doubt it on Hensel. Uh, Unseen Elder play rate will go up a bit. I don't think Arrakis play rate will go up. If anything, it'll go down. Um, Usurper should remain the same. Philavandrel still sucks. Woodland will remain the same. You'll see more Calvite. You'll see more Aridin. Because Aridin is a combo type deck with Mortart, uh, it means you don't have to play cards like um, Nagflar because you're going to have more mulligans, which means more consistency, which means you don't need to run the more consistent cards. So uh, overall, I'm a huge fan with most of these changes. I think the numbers on some of the leaders are a little off. Um, Bran, Arrakis Queen, Harold are the ones that are most concerning. Um, but other than that, I think they're pretty good. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to the end of this week when these patch will take effect. Well, not the end of the week. Uh, probably Thursday or Friday because they generally don't do patches on the weekend. So a uh, bit of a longer video. I know I've been rambling a while. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys think that they overdid some leaders or underdid. Um, and yeah, I'll see you on the next video.